Global temperatures reached exceptionally high levels in 2023, shooting past the previous record in 2016 with an average 1.48 degrees Celsius rise from pre-industrial times. This might seem like an abstract number, but what does it mean for the natural environment we need and love? The plants and trees on the rock and the Alameda Gardens, the rich sea life that surrounds us, and the birds that live with or pass over us. Possible impacts? Well, I would say one thing in particular, the special plants of Gibraltar, which include uh, a couple of species that grow only on the rock and nowhere else. Well, these plants belong to species groups that belong really to, to higher mountains. And I would say that they are particularly susceptible to climate change and we really need to um, watch this space and see what happens with those species and whether they begin to struggle. There was a, a study, for example, in the early 2000s about, um, about honey buzzards, for example, um, arriving, their arrival not being as in tune in the Netherlands with the, the emergence of, of hornets, which is what they, what they feed on, hornet, um, hornet larvae. Um, and, and that must be happening to many species. Now, whether, whether the birds are able to adapt or not is a, is, is a different thing. I mean, the cl climates have oscillated uh, th uh, throughout the entire, as, for as long as the, the world has existed. Um, the issue here is, is how quickly it's happening compared to other periods and whether species have time to evolve and adapt to it. The jellyfish and the tunicates, uh, which we actually saw last week, uh, huge blooms of, of tunicates, which are different to jellyfish, these gelatinous organisms actually do very well in the warmer waters, uh, much better than a lot of the vertebrate species like fish. And so uh, we will be seeing uh, greater intensity blooms and more frequency of these blooms as waters continue to warm up carbon dioxide when absorbed by the ocean becomes a very weak acid and so what we're seeing you might have heard this term uh, um, ocean acidification and ocean acidification is the direct result of the increased co2 and that affects the calcifiers so anyone that likes eating shellfish uh, in a future ocean they may not be able to make those shells and so the future of those organisms are potentially at risk and from my perspective my interest is the primary producers the, the, the things that kick off the the ecosystem the phytoplankton and I study phytoplankton that calcify specifically um, and my interest in that is because if in a future ocean they are not able to calcify how might that affect the the whole ecosystem and, and, and potentially not well. The impact on the natural environment itself may set alarm bells ringing for many but that's not where it ends. I would say that the real wake-up call to take the climate crisis seriously is, is actually the impact on us, on humans. I mean, um, we are in the middle of a long drought, for example. Um, we're lucky enough to desalinate our, our water, although we, we burn fossil fuel to do that as well. But, but our, our neighbours in La Linea and beyond are having to ra ration water in January. That's, that's very serious and is, is possibly a climate change impact. Um, in other parts of the world, we're seeing, we're seeing uh, displacement of populations, migration, and I think that, uh, that, yes, we need to worry about wildlife, but what we really need to worry about is the impact on humans. As humans, we've always, uh, we've always gone where there's water supply and where there's food. So uh, if, if the sea is uh, less capable of producing food because we've affected its ability to, to primary produce, then uh, obviously uh, a lot of these settlements will have to move elsewhere where, where the sea can support our population. So uh, it is predicted that as climate, the effects of climate change become worse, that there will be migrations of people uh, to, to, to the north and to the south. The director of the Copernicus Climate Change Service, Carlo Buontempo, says we need to urgently decarbonize our economy, while using climate change data and knowledge to prepare for the future. For now, the agency says 2024 is likely to be even hotter, and to see global heating surpass the average 1.5 degrees Celsius threshold. Time will tell what effects could be in store for the world, for its wildlife, and for us.